This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. This is an intro. Don't need to intro. I don't need intro. This is just a fake show. It's just a fake show. Fake show. Fake show. YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Back at you today to talk to you a bit about why I vape. Because I got an email from Wayne over at DIY or Die Vaping asking if I'd sit down with you and tell you my story. Here's the thing about my story. Now, it's something you need to understand. I never wanted to quit cigarettes. I loved cigarettes. That's what makes my story a bit more unique than a lot of the others that you might hear, is that I never planned to quit. I was going to smoke cigarettes until the day I died, which, now that I've started to vape, seems like it's going to be much further off into the future than I'd originally anticipated. I plan on living a much longer, healthier life now that I've found vaping. I was a smoker through and through. I was a pack a day smoker, sometimes a pack and a half a day, and no part of me ever anticipated giving it up. I took my first drag at the age of 15. I loved everything about cigarettes from the first time I tried one. I loved the way that they felt between my fingers. I loved the way that they filled my lungs with you know, noxious fumes. I loved that I wasn't doing something good for myself. I loved that I was doing something that was wrong, something I knew was wrong. It was that rebellious teenage spirit, I suppose, that brought me to cigarettes originally. I think that that's what kept me in the throes of tobacco addiction for the longest time, was the rebellious nature of cigarettes. The cool factor, I guess. That and the dizzy sensation that I'd get about, you know, halfway through the cigarette. But of course, that dizzy sensation went away after, you know, a few months, and then something that I could blow my money on. I guess. I don't know. It was never difficult for me to get cigarettes. It was pretty well known that once you were introduced by someone to Sammy, the guy that ran the local bodega, you pretty much had an inn and you could go there and buy cigarettes whenever you wanted. He didn't card you. He didn't care. As long as you paid. So I never had a problem get acquiring cigarettes growing up. There were some that did. There were some people that made a business out of it in my high school. People that would, you know, buy cartons and then sell them at 10 bucks a pack. It was never difficult to get a pack of cigarettes. When my buddy found out that I was smoking, yeah, I even kept it hidden from some of my best friends. He wouldn't speak to me. He basically gave me the silent treatment for about six months, you know, we took the same route home from school. Yeah, I'm one of the few people that can say they walked a mile home from school every day, because they did. I walked a mile home from school every day. And I remember one day, I'm walking home from school, and he's walking next to me, and, and we didn't speak that day. It was not for another month or so that we started to talk again and be friends, because he didn't want anything to do with my cigarette smoking. And he wasn't the only one that tried to get me to quit. My parents tried to get me to quit, too. My father, for the longest time I thought it was my mother, but years later I found out it was my father. This was good. He used to go through my pocket, take out the cigarettes from the cigarette pack, and then put the pack back in there. <laughs> so I would get to school the next day thinking I had a full pack of cigarettes, and, you know, I didn't. <laughs> it was completely empty. And then I'd have to buy a $10 pack off that kid at school. And he and my mother both had smoked before I was born. I remember once going to this girl's Sweet 16 out on the far end of Long Island. I didn't know anyone there. I honestly don't know why she invited me. Dated her friend very briefly, but I didn't really know her. I had no idea why I was there, to be honest with you. But me being me, I remember no one at that party was dancing. It was a Sweet 16 and no one was dancing with each other. It was the lamest thing ever. I don't remember where it was being held. Some some sort of event venue, I don't remember, but there was a patio outside and I lit up a cigarette and I started dancing by myself, just dancing. But when I went inside, I mean, people were pretty much applauding me. I don't know, I guess I got the party going. And for the rest of the night, I danced with this girl. I don't even think I caught her name. I remember at the end of the night, people were going home and I'm standing next to this girl and wondering if I should kiss her or not. And you know, I take another pull at my cigarette and I start coughing. I make some comment because it's cool to smoke and it's cool to, you know, have a hacking cough with it, I guess. And I comment about it and she turns to me and says, well, why do you do it? 
I couldn't answer her. From there, I smoked all through the rest of high school, I smoked through college, and into my adulthood. I smoked into my marriage. My wife smoked. My brother-in-law smoked. We all smoked. We were a smoking family. Father-in-law had a heart attack. He's, he's okay, thankfully, but he had a heart attack from smoking cigarettes, and that's when he finally stopped. And even after my father-in-law had his heart attack, we kept right on smoking because no part of us ever wanted to quit. We were gonna smoke till the day we died. That wake-up call had no effect on us. So you can imagine the shock when a couple years go by and my wife comes in the door holding a cigarette that's not shrinking down at all. It's not burning. It lights up red and she's exhaling what looks like smoke, but it's not a cigarette. And I turned to her and I said, what the hell is that? And she smiled at me and said, it's an Enjoy. It's, a, it's an e-cig. And I said, like the ones we got at the mall that time? And she said, no. Nothing like the ones we got at the mall that time. Couldn't believe how far they'd come over the years. From there, we made the switch pretty easily. The way I felt about it was not that I was quitting smoking. It felt like I was just changing brands. And I think that's what made it so easy because it felt just like a cigarette. My wife still had problems giving up cigarettes. She would still smoke. One foot in the pool, one foot out the pool. One day she says to me, honey, I think I want to get an ego pen. And I said, an ego pen? But honey, those things are so big. It was like a whole new thing because that ego pen felt a lot more like a hookah to me than anything else. Did I mention that hookah was pretty much my favorite thing all through college? I would finish up with school, I would hop the train to the East Village, and then I would just do my homework and enjoy a hookah. And I think that's what finally solidified it for me. That's when I no longer felt like I was changing brands. It felt like puffing that ego was no longer smoking a cigarette. It was something else. It was vaping. And from there, all I wanted to do was vape. All I wanted to do was try new flavors, new tanks, bigger batteries, and eventually, little by little, I stopped thinking about cigarettes completely. And my wife still had some issues, though. My wife was still one foot in, one foot out the pool. And when she would smoke a cigarette, I would sometimes smoke a cigarette, too. Mostly to support her, show her that it's, you know, it's okay that she's not fully committed to vaping, that we're in this together, that we're making this journey together, the two of us. But what I noticed was that I could not get halfway through the cigarette before I had to put it out because it just tasted so terrible and it felt terrible going into my lung and nothing felt right about it anymore. It was awful. And I think that's when I started to realize that vaping had really changed me. Puffing on a vape was not like puffing on a cigarette. I could walk up and down the stairs without gasping for air. And then the sub tank came along, the Atlantis hangar sub tank. From there, my wife was finally able to move completely away from cigarettes. It started to become a real hobby for the both of us. We would stay up late night talking about vaping and talking about gear and talking about juice and comparing notes on what we liked. It brought our marriage to another level. We were in something together, the two of us, and we were partners in it. And it gave us something more, something that we shared together. It was a wonderful feeling to rediscover my wife in that way. We didn't want to turn on the TV anymore, and we just wanted to talk to each other about vaping. And if we did turn on the TV, it was to watch a YouTube reviewer. And with that, we learned a lot more about each other, and we became an even stronger couple. And what vaping does for my wife is satisfy a craving. She's not smoking cigarettes anymore. It saved my wife's life. So vaping has given me so much that I don't want taken away. A chance at life that I never really thought I wanted, but now I do. I, I like being able to climb the stairs without panting. I like being able to think past the age of 50. I like being able to walk from my car to the door to my work without feeling a little short of breath. I like that it's given me an outlet with which I can express myself artistically and creatively. Vaping has given me a social connection, a connection with people and the world around me that I'd given up on a long time ago and just allowed myself to become even more of a loner than I ever was, but now given me that window into the world once again. It's allowed me to come out of my shell a little bit more. Vaping gave my wife and I 
a new way to bond. It made us a stronger couple. And these are things that I just don't ever take for granted. Vaping saved my life. And in so many ways, more than one. On Wednesday, May 11th of this year, 2016, a day from now, the new documentary film A Billion Lives is set to debut at a film festival in New Zealand. And I can only hope that the message of that film reaches far and wide, and that vaping has the opportunity to save a billion lives in this century alone. Because my story is not unique. Vaping has already saved millions of lives. The only difference is that I never hoped that mine would be saved, but vaping has saved it nonetheless. Till next time, I'm your homeboy, homeboy Josh. Vape on, vapors.